I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. We're still in Boise, and just thrilled to introduce you to Bruce Levi, who uh, I think you're going to find is a courageous, a <laughs> courageous Christian, as I would call you thank at this you. point. So, Bruce, uh, thanks for coming well, and sharing you. your story with you us. Uh, and where were you born? Well, I was actually born in North Dakota. Oh, and boy. My, my parents... Uh, brought me to Idaho when I was about a month old. So I you've been grew up my whole since? life and pretty much my whole childhood in, in, in Idaho. In yes. Idaho. So, and yeah. Brothers and sisters? Did you have, have a big family? I have a brother and a sister, both younger, and yeah. we're, we're actually all three adopted children. So. Oh, are you? Okay. Yes. That has a whole story into itself, oh, yeah. I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> can't go into that, but yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. And were they LDS? Oh, yeah, they still are quite active. My your, brother and your, sister are quite yeah. active. And your mom and dad? Were they my active? mother and dad are both. My mother was active. Uh, her ancestors came across the plains. They were converts in Wales and Germany. Oh, wow. My dad was raised Lutheran and Congregational. And they met uh, during the Depression yeah. in eastern Idaho. And uh, my dad died when I was young, but my mother lived into her 80s and was a very active. Yeah. Temple worker until her uh, last days. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. very faithful and oh yes. There's a certain not pride. I don't want to say it that way for your mother, but mm -hmm. just uh, you know to be a temple worker yes. and, oh, and yeah. work in the temple and and yeah. be able to feel like you're doing yes. doing the Lord's work. Right. She definitely exuded <laughs> that yeah. and was proud so, of her work and sure. was dedicated. Yes. Yeah. So you. Primary, baptized, I guess, at age eight and all that stuff. And baptized my, my um, mother's brother at age eight and went to primary Sunday school from a little child and yeah. was, you know, in, indoctrinated, if you will, or learned all of Mormonism as a young child, was very active in everything. Yes. Yeah, just, just yeah. knew it was true and yeah. everything. Oh, yes. Seminary, did you take went seminary? Went to seminary. I was actually president of my seminary class. This was the, oh, yeah. the early morning seminary back then. So we I was had... going to ask if you had release <laughs> time here in Idaho. Do they do that? That was later. Was it? We were, still had to get up at So they know. do allow release time yeah. now? Because I know there's some yeah. places, I think Arizona, maybe a few places yeah. that you still have to do get yeah. the, get up early in the morning to I go. I still to, remember having to get up early and go, and some mornings <laughs> it was hard to get up. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Especially if you're up late the night before. Oh, yes. So, yep. <laughs> so uh, go through the Aaronic Priesthood, I guess, and do yeah, was, teacher. Yeah, I went through all the levels of the Aaronic Priesthood, and yeah. um, my, I had good friends that were my age, and you know, big yeah. families, and good friends that I still would love to talk to and have good memories of yeah. uh, all any, those days. Ever any questions about the church come up at all? Well, I think the first question that I really had um, when I was really young, I think it was in primary, the, hearing this story of the first vision and Joseph Smith, the, Smith's account is that he had this force of evil or darkness come over him. Yeah. And then he sees the vision of God and, and Jesus. And I really wondered well, what if he was still under the influence of evil and what he saw really wasn't oh. God, but was a, was a demonic 
You never, know? I've never thought of that. And I pushed that aside. In other words, once he was under the influence yeah. of Satan, did it continue? Yeah, because I never really, yeah. there was no real good evidence that he was delivered. But that was a passing thought, and I sort of buried it well, for it, years. It does say that the, the, the evil spirit seemed to leave, yeah, I guess. Yeah, but, but I still wonder. But that's an interesting, <laughs> an interesting thought. Yeah, yes. Ah, well, that was very perceptive. <laughs> Well, was, I think it was the Lord's doing, but yeah. anyway. <laughs> so what happened? Uh, anything else, or did you just keep, keep going on? Well, when I was a little older, I remember wondering in seminary, early morning seminary, we had the, it was the church history uh, curriculum, and it seemed that to me that either the Mormon leaders, the church leaders, or God was somewhat confused because the church starts in New York and then somehow Zion morphs into Missouri and Illinois and Utah. And then all of a Utah. sudden comes out to Utah. And I, I kind of wondered, well, I thought God was definite. I'd yeah. been taught that God you know, was definite and he gave modern revelation and it just kind of bothered me kind a little bit. Kind of had a flowing Zion yeah, here. Yeah, Zion floating kept Zion. moving, yeah. you know. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Well, you end up turning 19 and I guess uh, go on a mission. Yeah. My father had passed away and I was 10. And so I, my mother was very solid Mormon and uh, my friends were all active. I was active in church all through that time. So I went on a mission, went to the, went to the Idaho Falls Temple uh, as a child and did baptisms. But I did my endowments in the live ceremony in, in Salt Lake and City. Went down to yeah. Salt Lake to go through that. Yeah, went down there. And was my, it a film in no, Idaho Falls? Or I don't was know it when it eventually became that, but I, my but mother, my Salt mother Lake. really liked the Salt Lake Temple and okay. her sister lived sure. there. So we went there yeah. and it was, yeah. she thought it would be the, s temple. the, yeah. the special. Yeah. And it was quite interesting. Any yes. questions that came up out of that? Well, I was um, quite, shocked at um, just the whole thing was just a shock to me. The I, washing and anointing. The, yeah, the whole that. washing and anointing was very disturbing to me. Yeah, and yeah. I was just was like, whoa. I mean, I just accepted <laughs> it because I knew everybody had done it. Yeah. But I, it was kind of Well, that's how I sort strange. of assuaged my feelings. Well, sure. my mother did it, my sure. uncles and aunts did it, so yeah. I guess it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so how was your mission? It was very good. I went to Germany, uh, Frankfurt area mission, um, and uh, had, this is where I f actually first encountered Christians that witnessed to me about really? Christ, it was oh. in Darmstadt, Germany. It was Americans. What were they saying to you? Well, what you they, remember? I do remember exactly. A um, couple of young men that were about my age uh, were American servicemen, not in their uniform, as their, okay. they were in you know their street clothes. And uh, I remember one of them said, well, I see you guys say you represent Jesus on your name tag. Yeah. And I said, yeah. And the, he said, well, since you do, uh, tell me about your personal relationship with Jesus. And I said, I was kind of confused. What's a personal yeah, relationship? What's that mean? <laughs> we don't have that in Mormonism. Yeah, I, and I thought, well, so my answer was, well, yeah, I do. Kind of a bravado, a false bravado. And he said, well, how? And I said, well, I was baptized. And the, the man says to me, the young man, well, I'm not talking about getting wet, Mr. Levi. I'm talking about my buddy and I were friends from our hometown. We joined the army together, the U.S. Army, and we, we were buddies and we know each other. We know what we're thinking. We like to go to the same places. We play basketball together and stuff. And that's what I mean. I said, well, if you put it that way, I guess not. Oh, and I'm here to you tell really you. You really had to admit that. Oh, yeah, and verbally. Wow. And I remember distinctly, this is years ago, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit said to me, Bruce Levi, you are a liar. You are saying you represent me, and you are not. And that was the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Oh my goodness. And I was right in downtown Darmstadt, where the big <laughs> column still exists. And you never forget that Never moment. forget that. I knew right then. And so I just... How far into your mission were you? It was about halfway through my mission. Did you, what did you experience the second half then of your mission? Well, I had... Did you sense you were teaching more Jesus after that? No, I just kind of played the Mormon role, but I had, but I think I held off. Still converting people to the church, huh? Yeah, yeah. I was still active in that, and most yeah. of the people that we converted were American military people, oh. just a few Germans. The They're pretty, men. Germans are pretty skeptical and yeah. tough. And Lutheran. <laughs> and Lutheran. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you bet. Interesting. <laughs> wow. So then you come home. Well, I came back and went to work for the summer and went back to BYU. I. Spent a semester Started before there. my mission, two semesters, went back to BYU and 
the thing that I expected to find at BYU was I'd been taught, of course, as a young LDS person that the Bible has places it's not translated correctly. So I took the Bible and Old Testament, New Testament classes, hoping that I was going to be explained, well, just where are these un improperly translated? And there was no such teaching. And and you learned that at BYU. Yeah, I yeah. found out there was no answer for that. Were the were the teachers teaching that? No, they no, didn't. No, they didn't. <laughs> it's just there was no topic. It just was something that was not talked about, yeah. and there was no answer. I concluded they didn't. There was no list of verses and had why. Had the Dead Sea Scrolls come out by then and stuff? Well, the Dead Sea Scrolls had come out, but it wasn't something I knew about. Okay. Um, yeah, they came out in '47, yeah. I guess, or at least they were discussed. I don't know when they became more publicly more discussed. More, yeah. I, but remember. not during that time. Not during that. I didn't know anything about them yeah. at that time. Yeah. And that just has now proven even more yeah. so oh, yeah. that the, the Bible yes. hasn't been changed yes. by the great and abominable church. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and when I, after I left Mormonism, I did a study on that. Is, is the New Testament reliable? Yeah. Are the documents Had you the ever history? heard about the manuscripts before that? No. Well, oh. I, well, the only thing I had is I had an, the old style LDS Bible printed by... I th by the printers in England. It was the, oh. it wasn't a Mormon specific Bible and it had a dictionary in the back and there were a few notes in there that, that did expose me to that. Oh. And that also was God speaking to me, <laughs> that there is another viewpoint. Another poke or two. Yeah, another <laughs> poke of God, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Wake up, Bruce. So what finally <laughs> happens or, or does it happen then? You're, you come home, are you active? And yeah. you get married to a... No, I, or, I'll tell you what happened. Okay. I came back and went to, you know, finish my time up at BYU, was active. Uh, I was the branch financial clerk. I was an officer in the elders quorum. I was, you know, academically did well at college. You know, I was an honor student. Uh, graduated in a, with a Bachelor of Science degree in business. Uh, and toward my last time at BYU, I started to really have questions and um, even more. And, and this I, is when there really wasn't a lot of internet support yeah, or anything yeah. else, was there? I had never picked up a so-called anti-Mormon book or yeah. there was no internet. Right. Um, the Lord seemed to be just speaking. Um, in very, very specific ways to me. But I kind of came to the conclusion, not kind of, definitely, that there is no way that anybody can really keep all the rules of Mormonism and achieve the celestial kingdom. There's just not enough time. You and, just sensed that we couldn't yeah. keep all the Yeah, and I'd, and I'd met some general authorities uh, on my mission. One came, and I can't remember who, what his name was now, but I'd been to a conference in Salt Lake, and I thought, not to be disrespectful to anybody, but those gentlemen aren't, can't do it either. Yeah, they're, they're just men. They're just men. Yeah. And it, I'm just a man, they're just a man, and this is really not possible to do this. Yeah. And so I thought, well, at least I'll get to the middle heaven, because everybody can go there. Yeah. And it sort they're of basically took... Basically good people. Yeah, huh? yeah. I could be there with all the Presbyterians and Bath, <laughs> Baptists and Methodists and whoever else, and yeah. I'll be okay. Because there's no way to, to do that. There's just not enough time to... To qualify for that, for the celestial kingdom. Yeah, and so I started wondering, maybe there's something that's not right here. Yeah, and God showed me that. So what happened? Well, I left BYU and um, moved back to Nampa, Idaho. Yeah, and I got a job, and um, I just kept thinking about all this. Still believing the church still, was true still believe, and the yeah. only way to the celestial still kingdom. Still had that idea the church yeah. is true and, and, and even the corollary to that, that all the other churches are wrong. Oh, sure. And so I can't really go anywhere else right. because they're bad. Yeah. So I was torn between these two dichotomies, these two false dichotomies. And actually they <laughs> use the cross and stuff. Oh, and yeah. Who could trust a Christian? And they yeah. use the Bible and all that stuff. Had questions that. about the Bible still. Yeah. Uh, wasn't sure about that. but. Yeah. Finally, I, I actually just went, I went to my regular ward service, and the bishop was a very nice man who was a friend of the family yeah. and really liked him. He, but as I was sitting there one day in the spring of what would have been like 1981, I remember thinking, um, you know, this is really dry. There's no power here. It's just the same old stuff, keep doing these things things you have to do, and there's no excitement or power. You didn't get that feeling that you had in Germany when those 
Yes. You know, those oh, yes. gentlemen talked to you, the servicemen. When the Holy Spirit had convicted me, I felt none of that. And so that day, wow. the spring of 1981, I literally said to myself, I was single, uh, you know, I was living in my mother's basement. I had a job where I was traveling quite a bit. I was a sales rep. And I said, I'm leaving here today and I'm never coming back because this is, something's wrong. And I walked out that day. That is so And courageous. that's it. That's and amazing. I was, yeah. I went and I went down, I took my garments and quit wearing them and went and bought some regular underwear and I just made the break. Uh, what just did like your that. family think of this? Well, my mother was, she didn't really know about that. It wasn't until I became a Christian that my mother reacted. And what was that time frame? Was there a period of like you, I don't know what to yeah. do now, where do I go, where do I do For about six now? months, I just sort of wandered in the world wondering what's going on. And then somebody invited me to a Christian church service, and it was a big church in my hometown of what Nampa. What did you think of that the first time? Well, it was wonderful. Uh, it was wonderful because these people, several hundred people were happy. They were joyous. The singing was Phenomenal. They wanted to be there. Oh yeah, I thought, man, these people want to be here. And when I went to church, I didn't want to be there. It was boring, and yeah. you had to be there. You were right. forced to be there. Yeah, it was quite a revelation. Quite a difference. Yes. Uh, was there hand raising and a little bit? Yes. And some music. Music. And, and don't you? I don't know about this one, but did it have the words of, of the songs up on? And they're all about Jesus. And well, that you know, this is so long ago that this is before we had technology. You okay. know, So we just had to use hymnals. You okay. Know. But it was about Jesus, though. It was all about, and I was quite taken by that. This is a worship service. And you felt some and spirit I, there. Yes. Huh? See, I yeah. don't think Mormons can appreciate the fact yeah. that Christians actually have values and yes. have the Holy Spirit yeah. with them and that they get those feelings, but it, it doesn't save them. It, yes. They've been saved by Jesus. Right. And, yes. Oh, my. Yes, quite a difference. So was your mom upset at the point? Well, what happened, I'll, or? what really happened, I'll tell you this part. I When I went to church a couple of times, uh, Ed Decker was coming, and those of oh. us that know Ed Decker came and presented a seminar, and so I thought, well, I'm going to go, and if he if he messes up, I'm going to nail him. I'm going <laughs> to. I brought my You're prepared. Mormon <laughs> scriptures and some stuff, oh, and and I met Ed and and uh, uh, Jim with him. Was that is that the right name? And uh, they were very nice to me, and oh. I said, you know, I was prepared to nail you guys on this, but you haven't told anything that's not true. That's not true. And so. So I oh, came home and my mother had somehow known I had gone to this and oh, she uh, was very know. disturbed and yeah. uh, I believe she kind of threatened me in a sense that I've really messed up now. You've really, really done the dumb thing, Bruce. That's yeah. not exact words, but I, yeah. I can still remember her face was very, uh, I, <laughs> people don't like to hear this, but I believe it was demonic. It was very frightening what she said and that just cemented that in a way that I had done what was right. Because this was not a good thing, the way she reacted yeah. in kindness or trying to help. It was a threat. Right. Yeah, she was threatened too, I guess. But. And, yep. and so within a few weeks in church service, the pastor preached on Ananias and Sapphira. And I thought, man, God, the Holy Spirit knows who I am anyway, so I can't hide a thing. <laughs> and so that was another conviction that God knows me. And I thought, you know what? Did it's you know true. he? Did he know? Did you know he loved you? Yes. At that point, even yes. though you're a sinner. And, oh yeah, because oh. I had by then read some yeah. Christian books and okay. how about salvation, and I realized that Jesus did love me. And I had lived in part of Germany where Martin Luther had been, sure, and was very familiar with salvation by grace alone through faith alone. I knew what that was. You really did. And I intellectually. See, I left the church not knowing that. Yes. I've, I've learned it since, yeah. but I didn't leave the church knowing that. Now, you wrote to me a little bit uh, mm -hmm. about something called personal sanctification, yeah. or the progress sanctification. Could you, you want to elaborate or explain that a little bit? I thought you did such a good oh, job with that. I'll see what I, if I can do it justice here and verbally, but when considering you know, the differences between Mormon thinking and Christian thinking, uh, it occurred to me that for Christians, you know, Jesus is so gracious and loving that he comes and he saves us and he makes that salvation happen. As God. As, because he is God <laughs> yeah. and eternally God the Son. And yeah. so he can do that. Yeah. He is powerful. And so then we become his child. 
And then this then process. Then we become his child. Then we're his God. child at that point. Because yeah. before that, the Bible says we're sinners and even enemies of God. And we are not even able to come to him in the Bible, in the New Testament. So he, he changes all that miraculously in us. And then he brings us into this relationship or family. And then he starts working on us as we can handle it or as he wants to do it. It's his doing. Yeah. And then, and you so, see his hand in oh, it the yeah. whole way. Yeah. Yeah. And as we grow in Christianity, we, we change over time. And sometimes that's a slow, even messy yeah. process. Messy. Yeah, messy. Sometimes. And but like a real but it's family, honest. it's on, and like in a yeah. real family yeah. uh, of a human family, right. you have children that are, they, they learn quicker. Some don't, some yeah. get in trouble, then they come back. It's just a process of reality. But in the LDS thinking, it's Jesus only died to give us resurrection. Yeah. We're not saved. We're, We're not truly right. saved in a heaven. We then earn our way to heaven. So right. as a Christian, we have this process of sanctification that happens after salvation. And I think that LDS thinking is, no, we have a process of self-sanctification that we do, and then we might become saved at some point. Might. might. Yeah. Yeah. And it might go into the next life, who knows? Yeah, or, or clean it up in the millennium yeah, or something. Or something, right. some future un uncertain time. Yeah. yeah, I think that's wonderful. Yeah. A yeah. wonderful process yes. or a wonderful explanation yes. uh -huh. of that. And we don't... Uh, don't understand that, uh, or LDS do not understand that yeah. the concept of grace yes. and, and the difference yeah. between that and works. And I think because of that, they look at Christians and say, well, you're living too loose, or you're just cheap, taking cheap, cheap grace, grace or and something, you're something. taking advantage of God's grace. But no, as a Christian now, I realize God loved me, and He works with me, and He is so good to me. And I never and had that before. And you don't deserve it. I, but just, what joy to rest oh. in that. Isn't it wonderful? And then we have genuine love that wells up in us and we change over time. And God has changed me a lot over time. And it's been some hard knocks along the way. Yeah. But he's always been good. But <laughs> and I use the word honest, but you feel like you're you can be more honest. Yes. You don't have pride. Yeah. And and you're not as judgmental. You feel that That goes away because yeah. you realize that you didn't do it. He yeah. did it. And so we look at other people now and we say um, I can be a little more gracious to you, or a lot more, oh, because sure. because I. It's not about me. Yeah. It's about Jesus. And it's what Jesus your, did. Your relationship. Yes. yes. So, so your true. family? Did they? Any of your brothers and sisters? Have they been willing to listen? Or they've been unwilling to listen. Because um, I mean, you had such credibility. Yeah. Didn't you feel with your mission and BYU yeah. and everything that that you'd have? Uh, well, I was told by relatives and friends that I knew that, that I must be a son of perdition because I knew so much and then I somehow rejected it, so which was painful to hear. Outer darkness kind yeah, of I'm, thing. I'm You've lost go, the spirit yeah, and yeah. all that. Yeah, and that was what I heard. Yeah. And yet not everybody was willing to do that. Some yeah. said, well, you probably just didn't know enough. And you I said, well... You didn't have enough light. <laughs> yeah. And so that part was difficult. And it's taken several decades for me to now have a relationship with my brother and sister. Wow. Uh, several decades. But you do a little bit better. And my sister lives as here. As long as you don't bring up yeah. Christianity. Uh, and I've been able to talk a little bit about it, but my know. sister lives here and I see her on occasion and my brother lives in Utah and I... Well, kind of yeah. getting back to this 1981 time frame and no yeah. internet, have you been... Has it been fun for you? Of course, I've been in it just most more recently. I've only been out about six years. Mm -hmm. So, have you been? Has it been fun for you, kind of in a fun sort of way, I yeah. guess, to see the improvements in technology and things that have, yes. have brought some of this stuff forward, and the yeah. Cassandra Tanners and the yeah. books that are out there and so on. Yeah, I, I was very excited because after I became a new believer, I got transferred down to Utah, and I went. One of the first oh, things did. I did was go talk to Sandra Tanner personally and thank oh, her. Did you? And she was so what gracious. A, what a sweetheart! And she, yeah. I just think she's wonderful. Yeah. And did, never met never met Jared. But no, I yeah, didn't either. Yeah, but, but dedicated her whole life to yes. this, and is so. Yes. Like you say, so gracious with everybody, and I guess yes. she's still getting contacted. Yeah. She once told me recently that she used to get one or two. Yeah. comments every month, you know, yeah. about her and maybe coming out. She now gets three or four a week. Wow. Yes. People that are searching yeah. and finding things either on the internet or yeah. questions that come up. I think it's a big help 
because people, Mormons and people with questions can now look yeah. in relative uh, safety, if obscurity, you will, obscurity, yeah. and they yeah. can look. And so I think it's been a good thing. Yes. And don't you find that everything that comes out just continues to support oh, yeah. what you decided in 81 and yeah. stuff? That oh, yeah. Either whether it's the Book of Abraham yeah. or the papyrus and the facsimiles or yeah. the, the head and the hat. Well, I met, I met Hugh Nibley at BYU, and he had made the, the comment that if it was ever proven the manuscripts or the originals of the Book of Abraham came out, it would be totally damaging. To well, the, then they were. Then they did come out. They were found. Did he sense that? Do oh, you yeah. Think? He, I, he but came he to stayed a active, didn't oh, he? Oh, yeah. 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 Kind of like B.H. Roberts, who yes. knew that there were problems with yes. the Book of Mormon, but didn't want to yeah. uh, uh, yes. face that and, and make those changes. But you're right. All these things have come out, and they just, more and more comes out, the more we can see that uh, Mormonism just isn't really what it says. Yeah. And, and the more we learn that, the more we see that Jesus is what he said. Yeah. And he really does save people in a miraculous way. Yeah. And it's and wonderful. In, in an in individual way that we just don't, yeah. we just can't imagine. Yeah. Well, gosh, this has been so, so thrilling. You mentioned a book called Mormon Illusion by yeah. Floyd. Yes. I don't know how to say his last name. Mc Floyd McKelvin. Yes. McKelvin. And that was influential. Yes. Yeah. Well, back when I was when I went to this seminar at the when Ed Decker came, uh, they 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 had Floyd McKelvin's Someone little was, paperback, and okay. Floyd McKelvin was raised not too far from here. I oh, think he was okay. a Southern Baptist. He wrote a little book, yeah. and it was very instrumental because in the back, that's where he said, "Now this is what the Bible says about salvation." It's just very mm -hmm. simple, and I thought that is talking about me. I am a sinner, and I can't stop, <laughs> and I can't. I got to quit fooling myself, and yeah. then. There's this Jesus, then he is God and he can save. And yeah. I went, oh, that has got to be the answer. Wow. And sure enough, it is because the Bible says so. <laughs> oh, Bruce, we're about a minute okay. away. Yeah. Gone well, fast, huh? Is there yes. anything you want to say to your family or friends? or? Well, I, I guess I would just say that um, Jesus is real and he is a God that loves and he is very important. And if you're LDS or you're not a Christian and you don't have that sense of your salvation, Jesus is seeking to save you. And you need to pray and ask that he will reveal himself to you, yeah. that God will come and make these things known. Yeah. And make use of the things on the internet to find out because they're there for our use. And, yeah. and I'll bet the yeah. Bible has taken a different turn for you. Oh yeah. yeah. I love the Bible now and it's totally different to me than it used to be, to in a totally personal, meaningful way. And that we only used them in the, on the yeah. mission just to those few little scriptures yes. taken out of context. Taken out of context. <laughs> and I'm embarrassed about that. Yeah. That I did that, but I didn't know any better. Yeah. And I never <laughs> preached Jesus on yeah. my mission. Yeah. It was all about the yes, church and exactly. the prophets. Me too. Yep. Well, Bruce, just delightful. I appreciate well, thank you, you spending your yes. time and what, uh, what courage you had to do that back so many years ago. Yeah. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files. Wow. God bless you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. That was so